Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to GNR Central and you guys are probably wondering like where have you been this whole time? Well, I've been taking a break this summer. I'm kind of burnt out on GNR to be honest, but I feel like I'm kind of rejuvenated and I want to um, catch up on the news and I've been posting updates on GNRcentral.com as well. So I'm catching up on a bunch of the news. There'll be a bunch more news story videos going up this week and in the subsequent weeks, but probably the biggest news that's happened in the last little bit is the fact that a new picture of Izzy Stradlin surfaced from April of this year. And it's a picture of Izzy outside a skateboard shop in San Diego. And uh, this had made the rounds a couple weeks ago. But I guess it was might have been posted a while back, but nobody picked up on it. And somebody finally did. And apparently Izzy stopped by the skateboard shop. He shared some photos with the shop. And apparently he's been, he's been into skateboarding since he was a kid. We all knew he was into like dirt biking and stuff, but apparently he's a big skateboarder still. And it uh, looks like Izzy's looking pretty good. And he's still kicking, which is good. And then there's also this photo I've never seen of Axel before. Apparently, I guess he was skateboarding at one point in his life. Uh, for those of you who are collectors, there's an auction going on on Julian's auction. I reported on the story a while back. A Slash and his ex-wife Perla um, are apparently auctioning off a bunch of their stuff from their uh, old house. And there's literally 534 items of Slashes that are up for sale. Everything from a metal seahorse to a uh, framed New York Times bestseller book that he wrote back in 07 to six copies of Guitar Hero 3 if you ever wanted those. Um, he's even got baseball trading cards. He's got crossbody bags that have the Velvet Revolver logo on them. He's got hundreds of guitar picks for sale. The link is down below if you guys are interested. Um, just so you know, the auction ends tomorrow. So there's a bunch of stuff that already do have some bids on them. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of cheap, you know, from like 25 bucks all the way to thousands of dollars you guys can also uh, purchase. So go check it out and let me know if you guys ended up buying anything. So you guys are probably wondering what happened to that fan forum leak a couple weeks ago where there was 15 CDs worth of material that was supposed to leak. Well, you guys will probably be disappointed to learn that those leaks probably will never see the day of light. Um, possibly because management got in touch with certain people who probably had the leak tapes and paid them off from what I've heard. Or basically came up with a settlement that will make sure that those tapes never see the light of day and are never around circulating. So according to one forum poster referring to the person who made a big noise about the leak said, the rumor is he created the noise to get the attention of Axel's management so that they would pay him off to back down on the potential leak. He shelled out a lot of cash for the discs and wanted his money back. Other members of the forum have claimed to have been in contact with this person who had the leak tapes and heard some of the leak material. It appears for the time being management has stepped in and stopped the leaks without the knowledge of Axel Rose. It's almost, it almost reminds me of the days when Doug Goldstein was a manager and if you guys remember some of the stories when they would tour, he'd have a briefcase full of cash which was used to pay people off and do that kind of stuff. It almost seems like Team Brazil does this kind of stuff too. Turning now to some news about the man, the myth, the legend, DJ Ashba. Uh, he had revealed recently in an interview that he was basically decided to step away from Guns N' Roses once he learned that Slash was going to be rejoining the band. Uh, he, was he was speaking to a outlet called Vegas Junkies, and he talked a bit about his time with Guns N' Roses, saying uh, that uh, 6 a.m. had a number one biggest song of the year on the radio, but it didn't come close to comparing or preparing me for the magnitude that was ahead of me. I had no idea. I had no idea about a lot of things, and I don't understand... I didn't understand taking the gig, there'd be a certain, because I went into it probably naive. Slash is one of my guitar inspirations, so to me, it was just so inspiring and such a cool thing, but I didn't really think about it. And oh my god, there are the hardcore GNR fans, and you've got to win these guys over. And once you do, you win them for life, and they're the best fans you could possibly have. But I didn't realize there was going to be a big handful of people that no matter how good you do with the gig, they were going to hate you because you're not one of the original members of the classic lineup. And I finally get that now, standing back. I totally get it and I respect it, but it's almost like they immediately pitted me against Slash and I was just like, I'm a fan too and I'm one of you, so it was weird for me to get used to that. It was just one of those things where I wanted to do whatever I could to do the gig justice, trying to bring back or carry on that reckless rock and roll attitude that I loved about the band. He was also asked about his July 2015 departure, that he was leaving Guns N' Roses, and the water pioneer would say, it's one of those things where I knew Slash was coming back, which as a fan... You've got to understand, I'm a fan, incredibly excited. And number one, I played a lot of Slash's parts, so I didn't have the brain capacity to relearn three and a half hours worth of material differently. But more than that, if he's coming back, this is his gig, and I'm glad he, I'm, I gladly stepped like, hey, it, it was the best of both worlds, and because 
uh, I get my favorite band back and I get to play in a band called 6am that I helped create. So it was a win-win for me and I'll always cherish those times I had, but yeah, I gladly stepped back. And most recently in 2016, Ashba claimed that uh, he was approached about being part of the GNR Not In This Lifetime tour by Axel, but he declined citing his desire to focus on 6am. Some cool news for you guys, if you guys are fans of Van Halen or Sammy Hagar, uh, he has a TV show um, that appears on AXS TV called uh, Rock and Roll Road Trip, and he interviews different musician friends, and he had Duff McKagan recently on. It was on season four, episode 12. I put the link down below. It's about a half an hour in length, and he goes to Duff's home, and uh, he, it's probably Duff's pool house. He's go, basically talking to him, and it looks pretty small. And uh, they just talk about Duff's career, he talks about his new album, Tenderness, and it's all the same recycled stuff Duff has talked about in previous interviews, how he's super woke, how he uh, reads a lot of books, and how he's super into the news and that kind of stuff, and, uh, you know, he doesn't like the political divide in America, and all the same stuff he's been rambling on for the last six months or so. Uh, so if you guys want to watch it, I've put the link down below. I really like Sammy Hagar. Um, I probably didn't listen to a lot of the Hagar Van, Van Halen, you know, when I was much younger, but now I'm starting to appreciate a lot more. But uh, it's nice to see him doing what he's still doing at his age and still rocking it. So go hit the link down below if you guys want to see his interview with Duff. That concludes today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to the like button and subscribe if you love GNR as much as I do.